Alright, welcome to your introduction to energy video. So let's start talking about what energy is. It does relate to your ability to do things, stuff like that. Because Mechanical energy, which is what we're specifically discussing here in class, is related to applying a force over a distance. So if you think about activities that require a lot of energy, like say playing sports or something like that, you're applying forces to run across the field, certain distances, things like that. Okay, so in some simpler things that require energy too, if you're lifting something to a particular height, if you're pushing a box over a distance, all of these act actions apply forces over distances and require energy. All right, you can also think of it as doing work. So the first type of energy, the first type of mechanical energy we're going to talk about is potential energy. So potential energy is re related to the object's position, all right? So if you think about something that you lift up really high, all right, so if you lift a book up off the table, you've given that book potential energy because now if you drop the book, the book would experience the force of gravity and travel a distance down to the ground and therefore expend its energy. So anytime anything is lifted above the ground, it has potential energy related to what it would do if it was let go. And that's the major type of potential energy we are going to work with, all right? Because that's the most common type of potential energy that related to the force of gravity, all right? But other things have potential energy too. You think about a rubber band when you stretch it. You add potential energy because when you let go, the rubber band's going to fly and it could hit something and break it or could hit someone and hurt them, okay? Or a spring. If you have ever gone on a trampoline, those springs, when you jump down on the trampoline, the, sp the spring sits there and collects potential energy and then releases it, popping you back up, okay? So potential energy is always some sort of like stored energy that can be released. And the one we are really, really going to talk about is something that's related to the force of gravity for a falling object. So, and what that's called is, since it's related to force of gravity, gravitational potential energy. Okay? So gravitational potential energy, GPE, or most commonly you'll see it referred to as PE, is equal to mass times gravity times height. All right? So M stands for mass. G is the acceleration due to gravity. And then H is your height. So this is the way you will see this equation written all the time in class. Now keep in mind, when it comes to variables, PE is one letter. You never separate the P from the E. That just stands for potential energy. It's one variable, it's one number that we can solve for. Okay, so don't let that confuse you when it comes to working with rearranging equations or something like that. PE is always stuck together because it's the same thing. And then, just a reminder, you need to remember that G is constant, all right, that's our 10 meters per second squared. A lot of times this constant won't be given to you in a problem. You have to remember that you know G, all right. Another thing to maybe keep in mind is you can also find potential energy using force, all right, so say, or rather, the weight of an object. So if you remember Fg, is equal to mg, or fg is also known as weight. So sometimes you might see in a problem, instead of being given mass and having to remember g, you might be given an object is 500 newtons, which means you already have mg and you just need to multiply by height. All right, and then of course, there can be problems where you know the potential energy and you know the mass of the object and maybe you want to find out how high it is in order to have that potential energy. Or maybe you know how high the object is and you know its potential energy and you want to solve for mass. So you do want to know how to rearrange for M and H. So let's do that. So if PE equals MGH and say we want to find M, we have to move the G and the H. So you divide by GH on both sides. And then you have M is equal to your potential energy. Remember, that's always just going to be one number divided by GH. Or say the other way around, we want to find height. MGH 
and we want H by itself, so we have to move the MG, just so you know those canceled over there. So MG will cancel on this side, and we'll have H is equal to potential energy over MG. Okay? And always keep in mind, whenever you see MG together, that could always be replaced with force of gravity or weight. Okay? One last thing to talk about is the units for energy, right? Because they're related to moving something with a mass over a distance, or more importantly, a force, all right? So if we remember that mg is fg, we could also say that potential energy is equal to fg, and then height being a distance, fg times a distance, and you should kind of know what the units would be for that, okay? All forces have newtons, all distances are measured in meters when we are using our equations correctly. So the units for energy are newton meters. Or this has an abbreviation called a joule. So you'll see joules most commonly, which can abbreviate with a capital J. But keep in mind, good true false question, joule is also known as a newton meter. OK? So let's do a couple of sample problems. Potential energy. What is the potential energy of a 12 kilogram object lifted five meters off the ground? So what we know is our mass is 12 kilograms, our height is five meters, and then what else do you have to remember that we always know even though it's not written? Hopefully you are saying g is 10 meters per second squared. Our equation is PE equals mgh. So if we plug in our numbers, we're going to have PE equals 12 times 10 times 5, or that's going to be equal to 600, and our units, you can write them as joules, or you could say newton meters. Either way would be acceptable. And let's do one more sample where you're solving for something else. So here we have an object has 2,000 joules of energy when lifted 50 meters off the ground. What's the mass of the object? So we know our potential energy is 2,000 joules. And we know our height is 50 meters. And what else do we know even though it's not written? G equals 10 meters per second squared. So if you think our, about our equation, we have PE equals MGH, but we want to solve for M. So we divide by GH on both sides. So M is equal to PE divided by GH. Or M is equal to 2,000 divided by 50 times 10, or 2,000 divided by 500, and you get 4, and then since it's mass, kilograms. All right? So remember, you need notes in class, and you want to do the online form before you get back to school. And I will see you in class.